We are with Pete Hamill in New York City, and on the toll-free here is Frankie in Woodstock, New York. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. You're on, Frankie. Good evening. Hey, Tom. Hey, Pete. Uh, I'm uh, doing fine, thank you. Tom, you know, I saw you with the uh, Nicole Simpson sisters the other night. I thought you did a terrific job. Thank you. And I'd like to congratulate you. The first one who asked them some tough questions. It seems every show they go on, because I, I think O.J. did it. Uh, but I got to tell you, I think, I think it's disgusting what I read about all the, you know, like you said, uh, her face was battered and everything. And exactly, the, exactly. The family does nothing. They're, you know, they were just on the family. I heard was just on O.J.'s gravy train. I'm glad you liked the show last Friday night. Frankie, what's on your mind tonight, my friend? Yeah, I'd like to talk about uh, what's going on with uh, some of the coverage with the newspapers. Uh, immediately, we're blaming the Middle East. Uh, Mr. Hamill, I don't know if you saw the New York Post on Thursday and Friday. Uh, the editorial on Thursday immediately said before anyone knew anything that this is obviously the Middle East. And uh, then they had this incredibly racist cartoon in the, uh, p in the page six. And I think there's two things that everybody's forgetting about what's going on here. I think uh, if the government, uh, as you know, since J. Edgar Hoover and still to today, uh, the government seems to infiltrate every kind of African-American group that it can. They even, right. you know, they set up Malcolm X's daughter. If they spent half the time that they spent infiltrating these black groups who don't hurt anyone, and, and, they, and they spent it looking into these loony white groups, the, the I question, think The question is, happen. why couldn't they infiltrate the Michigan militia or other well, uh, they don't, activists? They don't infiltrate any of the white groups. The, the, the people who go around, you know, with all these loonies... Let's, let's give them a chance to answer the question, Frankie. What do you okay. think, Pete? Well, I mean, I, I, I think the parallels are, are great about the black groups. This whole Waco martyrizing that's going on right now. Imagine if what happened in Waco had happened with Louis Farrakhan. If the first four government agents who showed up were murdered, and you had a 51-day siege, and then at the people, these same people who were making martyrs out of this nut David Koresh, uh, would have been demanding the airborne pilot them way uh, drop into Waco. So I think that's absolutely true. And the, the Arab baiting was ferocious, awful. Radi talk radio was the worst offender, in my opinion, calling them towel heads and all kinds of other things, demanding mass deportations, um, and not apologizing once the story began to come out. No, I mean, no, but you see, you touched on this in your Esquire article, which I want to get to in a second here, Endgame, in which you talk about the dwindling down of this, of this terrible century in many, many ways. Right. And in other ways, Pete, this great century. I mean, some great things have happened in the That's 20th true. century. But when they finish the talk radio program, it's over. Problem solved. As you say, on television, what takes one hour now to solve the problems of, of, of the world. It all happens during a one-hour teleplay, and at the end, problem solved, let's sell the soap pot. Right. And, that, right. and that's the same on talk radio. Frankie, I'm glad you Tom, called. can I ask you one more thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I was also, I heard you mention your friend uh, Dennis Prager there the other night. He was the first guy I saw on TV saying that uh, there's a certain kind of evil that exists in the Middle East, and that, that, you know, this must be in the Middle East, and we have to face the fact that there's a well, certain kind of Well, you can't have seen him on TV, Frankie, because his television show has been off the air for more no, than a I month. I did see him on TV. He was on uh, CNN or something with Larry. He was on either with Larry King or some show on CNBC. He well, I didn't interview. see that. I didn't see that. And he said, he said this incredibly uh, racist stuff, and he, he tries to come off as, as a, uh, this decent guy. And, uh, Pete, uh, there is one, one thing that I think we do have a, a right to be against the government for. What about this? terrorism that we sponsor all over the world, like in Guatemala, uh, the, CIA, uh, the CIA, people are saying we got to beef up the CIA now. Frankie, you are absolutely correct, but that is a different program tonight. We're just yeah, talking... Yeah, but Tom, you know, if we don't deal with the terrorism but that our country perpetrates against the rest of the world, uh, we, we, no we can't here, be surprised that. when the chickens come home to roost and, and uh, people come here to, to uh, use terror. We use terrorism okay. in Nicaragua. Frankie, I'm very glad you called. Thank you for watching the program. All right, and, Tom I Rudy. and I appreciate the compliment. Thank you, my friend. Let me ask you here about the, the, the McNamara book, which I read you said was fine but long overdue, in which he declared the Vietnam War a tragic mistake for this country. Well, the overdue part we already know about. What, uh, what I thought was wonderful about what happened with the McNamara book in the first week was that the, the debate over Vietnam that we never had had finally begun. Uh, the great tragedy of what happened with Vietnam, among the many tragedies, including the human ones, was that we had the first military defeat of our career, of, of our history, except perhaps the War of 1812, and we did not have a national debate when it was over, and the reason was that Watergate came pounding in at the end of it. 
Uh, well, the and the other reason, too, my friend, was that nobody at that time wanted to have this debate. This was not a, di a discussion that America wished to have in 1975. And well, you're I right about Watergate. That played I, a part. It played a big part because, as you remember, Ford was the president when the flag was lowered on the top of the American embassy. What I, what I meant by the debate was not the casting of blame, but to sit down as intelligent, rational people and say, how did we get into this? What can we learn from it? And why, how can we ever avoid ever getting into anything like this again? And McNamara was saying some of those things in the shows that I saw uh, after his book came out. I think now, uh, alas, Oklahoma, or the, the horror of Oklahoma has probably pushed that back off, off the stage again. There's one thing, though, that came to my mind, because this program is part and parcel of a, of a talk radio effort that CBS syndicates to stations around the country between 11 and 2 a.m. Eastern Time. And I went downstairs to radio following a discussion here last week with uh, Peter Arnett, who was on right. our show a week ago talking about this very topic. And I had a call from a fellow who served this country in Vietnam. He said, you know, the only thing about McNamara saying the war was a mistake is we should not allow the American veteran who served in Vietnam as being painted into the corner as the one who made the mistake by going there. We should not dishonor the service of those who went there under orders and in some cases under duress to serve their country in almost impossible circumstances. Absolutely, Tom. I mean, but those of us who wrote very strongly against this war, the uh, people like myself, always said that the, that the man who has been sent there is as much a victim of the policy as anybody else. Correct. And what we want to do is to get those people back. The reason we were against the war was we loved America, not because we loved North Vietnam. And the point was, get those people back, get them out of harm's way. Those people are not responsible for them. I had a brother who served over there and got wounded. Uh, that didn't mean that even he supported the war by the time it was over. But, uh, but the, 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 the policy makers, the people who were not in harm's way, who never had a bullet fired at them, that's another whole bunch of people. And I think they should uh, certainly be held accountable. No question. It, does, it doesn't mean strapped in the electric chair. It doesn't mean consigned to the ash heap of history. But they ought to explain what they, were, they thought they were doing. No, McNamara no had question. begun to do that. No question. Right. We'll be back with Pete Hamill, author of A Drinking Life, at 1-800-952-2788 after this timeout.